My name is Bob Berg, the Chief of Police for the Centralia Police Department in Centralia, Washington. We're a full-service police agency with 33 commissioned officers, an additional six full-time employees, and about five part-time employees. So our total strength are, is about 40, 42 employees. Um, we serve a population of about 16,500. Uh, we're a busy department, 22 to 23,000 calls for service a year, and uh, have a declining crime rate, but it's been an awful lot of work to get there. Yes, good question. E-ticketing in and of itself, in sector, it's, it's a methodology by which paper is no longer used and reports are gathered electronically, transmitted electronically, and then the ability to produce a paper copy, of course, is there all the time. And of course, in, in the ticketing aspect of this program, paper tickets are in fact given to the violator, but the data is stored in the officer's computer in the car and then the officer transmits that data to what's called a back office server where, for example, with accident reports and tickets, the on-duty supervisor can then go into that back office and approve all of those reports before they are finally transmitted to the various locations. So instead of having the old days where let's make a copy of this accident report and send it to our city engineers, to the prosecutor's office, to state patrol, state department of transportation, these things are transmitted electronically and to the various computers that uh, service those agencies. So there is no paper, it's done electronically. The one shortfall in all of this is that our records management system, because we collect information off citations and accident forms that we use for other purposes beyond just the processing of the ticket or the uh, processing of the accident form and the mailing of it, if you will, to the insurance company. So what we were doing is we were using clerical staff to basically take that information and manually re-enter it into our records management system. Problem there, it's time consuming, it's staff and labor intensive, and it's prone to error. So the program that was developed through our commercial vendor that provides our records management system was a program that would actually data mine information presented from the server which collected the information on citations and collisions and data mine that and place it into the records management system populating the various fields for name, address, height, weight, all of those unique characteristics that we look for in identifying people. So once that uh, protocol was established, uh, what happens now is that when those tickets go to that computer that sends it out to all of these other computers, it also sends it to our records management system computer, which puts our clerical staff more in the position of quality control people who check things for anomalies, mistakes, whatever, an address hasn't been updated, uh, the officer forgot to ask the address, assumed the one on the, red, the driver's license was correct, but in fact we know from other contacts with that person that the person has moved. So to make sure that a newer address is not uh, overridden by an older one or replaced. So there is still some quality control issues, but like for my agency that basically issues between 2,500 and 4,000 tickets a year, the, sa the savings in staff time is tremendous and more importantly the accuracy is much better. Uh, as much as you know, the, the public might think that you're just automating a process and making it so much easier for the officer to give us a ticket, the fact of the matter is most of the complaints we get from individuals who were stopped for speeding is they're already in a hurry and they don't necessarily want to spend 12 minutes with an officer while he or she does the due diligence that they must do at a traffic stop. They, they would rather take their medicine and get on their way. And frankly, from an officer's safety perspective, by being able to just use that barcode scanner in the car and populate those fields, they're not looking down, riding on that paper ticket all the time, and so they can pay much more attention to the tactical aspects of their vehicle stop. The one place we haven't been able to maximize its potential is with our motor officers. And, and one of the problems we have there is that to reduce that technology so that it will fit in the grip box of a motorcycle and make it easy for the motor officer to use is very expensive and we haven't found a way to pay for that yet so our officers still scratch tickets, our motor officers do, but everybody else, we're well above the 90% uh, uh, for um, issuing citations in sector. And the, and the other thing about this is we can actually issue summonses this way because the, the officer fills out the summons and then they electronically transmit it to our city prosecutor or to the county prosecutor 
they approve it and file it with the court electronically, then the hard copy is actually mailed to the defendant. So it's got a lot of upside. It integrates well with the other things the state of Washington is doing on e-ticketing and e-trip, everything from uh, how commercial vehicles are handled and everything else. So it's, it really is cutting edge uh, stuff. And I think one of the reasons from a technology perspective that it caught on so easily in our department. I mean, there's always the f this and that when you're doing something new. But one of the reasons it caught on so easily was because our the officers in our department have been exposed to so much technology um, that this was just another tool in the toolkit that they could use. It wasn't like, geez, we don't even know how this would work. They're very familiar with mobile data computers. They're they're on most of our calls out of those 22 to 24 thousand I mentioned. Most of them aren't even voice dispatched. It comes up on the screen, this is the call. And they, they buy the call by either acknowledging on the radio that they're taking the call or just by keystroking in the computer. And so all that stuff is preserved for record's sake. So seeing that, uh, we have our officers watch uh, what's going on in the schools from webcams in the schools on their MDCs. They're just used to this, all this technology. Me, on the other hand, I'm still trying to get my pen to work. But I've got great people that embrace this and uh, make it work. And I just see that it's going to get better and better and better in terms of access to information. And I know there's a backlash with regarding to giving officers too much information that all of a sudden it becomes meaning, meaningless, almost like noise. But my opinion on that is our officers are bright and they know when they're being overloaded and they will pick and choose what technologies they choose to use out there on the street. My job as a chief is to make those available and they'll choose the ones that work best for them. Well, I think it's, it's fascinating to hear corollary things that are going on in other states that are similar, if not identical, to what's going on in Washington State. I think the contacts that one makes uh, on the breaks and just in asking questions, uh, th there's a group cohesion that develops over the days that we're here together, and I think that really helps uh, make those contacts. So you throw those things in your Outlook contacts and you've got them forever, um, uh, an email here, a phone call there. So that's one of the biggest values. The other thing is... Uh, I, I'm a chief, so I'm arrogant enough to think that we've got all the answers. But I'm also smart enough and old enough to realize that we don't. And so hearing things, uh, whoever says that a chief of a 33-person department can't learn something from a chief from a four-person department, well, they're, they're a fool. Because everybody faces unique problems. And one of the things that I've already heard here today that I absolutely agree with is even if you take New York PD, you break it down far enough, and it's just four or five cops working a neighborhood trying to do something to get service to the people that they work for. So from that perspective, I think it's, uh, it's a fascinating way to, to find out about things, a fascinating opportunity to share. In fact, one of the things that frustrated me a bit is I could have talked, of course, as you can tell, I, can talk, I like to talk, but I could have talked for hours about the other things we're doing from a technology perspective. And uh, I, I see that some of the things, based on the uh, agenda topics that I will be exposed to over the next three days, are things that we're doing as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how we did it, how we're doing it, versus how someone else is doing it as well, like crimereports.com. I think that's a fascinating program, and I'm going to watch and listen with interest when that presentation is made, because it's all good stuff.